welcome to the show. When Sandra was born, she had a lot of problems. Her kidneys were failing, her heart had a heart had a hole in it, and her left eye was missing an eyelid. Sandra's parents believed in God, yet they had no idea that he could heal until they watched a TV show. It was very traumatic. It was not what any mom would want to hear. Carol was pregnant with her first child and had a routine ultrasound. It revealed that her daughter had excessive fluid in her brain. The one doctor I had said that she probably would be, had an 80% chance of being mentally retarded, blind and or deaf because of the compression of the brain while she was forming in my body. That same doctor encouraged Carol to have an abortion. She and her husband, Paul Stanzione, didn't even need to discuss it. The easiest decision was to change doctors. God's given us this child, and if he wants us to have this child, whatever the issues are, we're gonna have this child. Carol carried the baby full term, and they named her Sandra. She had several physical deformities. The most noticeable was a missing left eyelid, but there were other problems. And when they uh, started working with her eye, they also found um, that she also had a hole in her heart. As more and more tests were made, more and more problems would just show up. Sandra had kidney issues. We noticed that her left side was not keeping up with the right side. Her left arm was smaller, her left leg was smaller. So it was a very difficult first year. One day the doctor called and gave them more bad news. He said that if her kidneys continued to deteriorate at this rate, she would be dead within the year. I just remember hanging up the phone and had my back to the wall and I just slid down the wall and just broke down and cried. And I had no hope. I did not have hope. I did not know where to go. I did not know what to do. My daughter needed healing and I wanted somebody to help pray with me. And I went from church to church and I basically got the same answers was that God made her this way. You have to accept this. It was devastating. It was a very isolating time. Carol was flipping through channels one day and found a show she'd never watched before, The 700 Club. There's nothing impossible for God. If Pat Robertson was on TV and he started talking about a God who still heals, a God who still heals. Wow, those are incredible words. I had not heard them in any of the churches. I had not heard them from the people. I just heard that I had to just accept the way Sandra was gonna be probably in a wheelchair or probably with a walker. But this man on TV said there's a God who still heals. That was amazing. It was amazing. It was exactly what I needed to hear. When Carol discovered the 700 Club and heard of a God that does heal today, it was awesome. And then we started believing that Sandra can be healed. God can do this. There was hope for Sandra. There was hope. Carol began watching the show every day. One time, while praying for Sandra's kidneys, she says she felt power go through her hand as she touched her daughter's back. The next doctor visit revealed something amazing. She had another ultrasound, and the hole in the heart was gone. And they could not find anything wrong with her heart. And I start jumping up and down. I go, oh, it wasn't her kidneys, it was her heart, it was her heart. I'm jumping up and down, I'm praising God. We began to believe that God can do anything. That happened almost 20 years ago. Since then, Carol and Paul say there have been many more miracles. The biggest one was the joy of watching their daughter grow up. I mean, she has eyelashes where they couldn't really grow. Um, it's just skin pulled from the side of her face, but God put eyelashes on that eyelid. God did that miraculously, so I can have eyelashes even though it's not a typical, normal eyelid. A hole in her heart is gone. Her kidneys are now functioning at normal. She has two legs that are absolutely perfect and beautiful. 
She went on to be a cheerleader. She's now on the dean's list at the college she goes to, and I am just so proud of her. There's nothing that she can't do trusting in God. Today, the Stanzion family says they have been forever changed through the healing power and love of Jesus Christ. The Bible says all things are possible through Christ, and I just want people to understand that, that they really can trust Him and focus their lives around Him because He really is the only one that we can fully depend on and trust in. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I've seen His healing touch, I've felt His healing touch, and He does heal today. And the biggest story is, like I said, is not as the heart or the hands or the legs, it's the lives that have been changed. There is hope that, that you just can't get from the world or even individual religions. It, it's about a God who loves us, and He still is. It's very exciting. God still heals today. People want to say the age of miracles is past. All of that was all wrapped up when the Bible was completed, and those miracles were all recorded uh, so that we could believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but somehow or other, Jesus changed after the Bible was completed, and those things don't happen today. Well, I'm here to tell you that's all wrong. Those things happen today. God still heals. The reason He does is that He doesn't change. Who changes? We do. We some, somehow think that, well, we're too smart for miracles, or we've got too many options. We think that, well, maybe some doctor will come up with a miracle cure as opposed to believing that Jesus will be able to do it for us. Here's what the Bible has to say about it. And the next time you hear somehow that, you know, God's changed or uh, that was a different age and, and that's not happening today, here's the scripture for you. It's from Hebrews chapter 13. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We casually say he's the Alpha and Omega. We, we casually say in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We, we casually say by, by him and through him all things were made. But start thinking about that. Start thinking that Jesus was there with God the Father. He was there with the Holy Spirit. When God spoke, he was speaking through Jesus. Now, when you get that, and then you start understanding where is Jesus in the Old Testament? Who was the God who in bodily form sat down with Abraham and ate with him? Who was the God in bodily form that stood at the tent of meeting with Moses and talked with him? Who was that God? And when you start saying it's Jesus in the Old Testament, then you see Jesus born in a manger, humbling himself to say, I will come and live with you. I will be your God. I will dwell among you. You see him live the sinless life. You see him on the cross pouring out his blood as a sacrifice for you and me. Because he wanted to take care of us. When you see that by his stripes we are healed. And then it doesn't stop there because three days later he's raised from the dead. And right now he ever lives to give intercession. He's literally praying for you right now. So Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, when he was walking the earth, what did he do? Well, look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. This spells it out. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That same Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
And what is he doing today? Well, he's going about doing good, healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Don't think that disease is from God. Don't think that your problem is from God. It's not. It's from the devil. Your solution is from God. The problem needs to be defeated, and Jesus is the one to do it. Now, how do you get the faith to believe? And, and you may say, okay, I, I'll, I'll go along with all of that. Jesus was there at the beginning. Jesus was in the Old Testament. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I, I get all that. But how do I get the faith to believe? Well, the same place. Here it is in Hebrews again, chapter 12. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, is Jesus good at doing things? Yeah. So if he's the author of your faith, is he doing a good job there? And if he's the finisher of your faith, is he doing a good job there too? So let Jesus be your faith. Don't try to drum it up on your own. Let him be your faith. And realize he's the author, he's the finisher, he'll see you through. You put all your trust in him, and that's when you'll get the miracle. Well, coming up, we want to have you see miracles in your life. So we're going to be praying for you. And then we're going to show you another healing story about a wife who took drastic action to help her husband with his back pain. She took the channel changer away from me. <laughs> and you guys know what that means when the man doesn't have the channel changer. <laughs> And she put the tape in. See how that tape led to this man's healing when we come back. When Stuyan developed excruciating back pain, he was forced to spend days confined to a recliner. And that's when his wife got a brilliant idea. She took away the remote control and then played a tape on the TV that led to his healing in an instant. Stuyan Yankov is a man of the sea, a proud fisherman for over 40 years. His story begins in his homeland of communist Bulgaria. When I was a kid, my dad started taking me fishing. And we, he took me fishing one Sunday, and that's when it all started. We caught more fish than anyone else around us, and I was on fire for fishing. Later on, we, I found out that I grew up, and I, was, uh, I finished eighth grade, and it was getting ready to go to middle school to learn a uh, trade, I noticed that the only people that can leave the country are the fishermen. They, they are the only ones that could leave the country. So that's, I, I wanted to go to a fishing school, and that's what I did in 1972. Stoyan went to a military-sponsored fishing school. He learned his craft well but he was also taught something else. You're in an environment where you're constantly brainwashed to believe in that system of communism, socialism, and atheism, and evolution. You have to understand that there is no personal freedoms in communism and socialism. Everything is controlled by the government, and you did whatever the government told you to. He completed the four-year program, and Stoyan's first assignment was aboard the first Bulgarian vessel to trawl off the northwest coast of the United States. But Stoyan had other plans. Everyone's dream at that time was to defect and live in the United States in a country so powerful and so advanced. We all knew how advanced the United States was, but we don't know how, how much. While their boat was docked in Portland, Stoyan and two other crewmen left the boat. A guard stopped them on the gangplank. His job was to make sure no one, no one came in on the vessel or left. But once every hour, he has to go around the ship and check everything. So he said, where are you guys going? I said, well, we're, we're defecting. He said, no, you're not. I said, why not? Well, you know, basically the gentleman didn't want to be a witness. So he said, well, every hour I have to go around the ship. So when they disappear out of view, just, you know, <laughs> go ahead and leave. It was that simple. Stoyan was free. He got a job right away as a crewman on a local trawler. As the years went by, he worked his way up to part owner of a trawler, making routine trips to Alaska. He soon met Angelique, and they married in 1986. She was a Christian, but Stoyan wasn't. He was this big, tough, 
kind of ornery Alaska fisherman, get out of my way, I'm coming through, and I don't care. My wife had tried to talk to me about God and Jesus, but I rejected it because of my background and, uh, and uh, striving to be the best at what I was doing. He would get really angry when I'd mention God or try to talk about God, and so after a while I just stopped. Decades of hard work took their toll on Stoyan, and he developed excruciating sciatica in his back and leg. And he was in a lot of pain, and it had increased to the point where um, he was immobile. And, and Stoyan had been in this recliner, sleeping and laying, sitting for at least a week and a half. As the pain got worse, Stoyan watched more television. One day, Angelique had an idea. She took the channel changer away from me. <laughs> and you guys know what that means when the man doesn't have the channel changer. <laughs> and she put the tape in. My mother had sent us this video. And of course, it was these incredible stories of miracles, healings, and people being saved. At the end of the tape, when Pat Robertson started talking about this man that is sitting on a chair with excruciating pain. Sciatic uh, condition is being healed by the power of God. He was basically describing me exactly down to the last detail. It was me, and that's what got my attention. And then at the end, when he said, uh, uh, in the name of Jesus, you are healed, get up and walk, it really got my attention. And so I looked at him and I said, what are you waiting for, you know, stand up. And he stood up. When I got up off the chair and I started walking around and I was shaking my leg and there was no pain, there was zero pain. I knew right then there was a God. And uh, I started believing the, in God right then and right there. When you feel the power of God coming over you, <laughs> it's like no other feeling. <laughs> You know God is there. Ever since that day, my back has been pain-free. There is no pain. Stoyan became a Christian that day. He and Angelique joined a church and were baptized together. That was a key turning point in our lives, that healing, because we both experienced that at the exact same moment. God began to work and move in our lives from, from that point, and he kept he kept on like this. Stoyan's journey as a fisherman started over 40 years ago, and he's still going strong today. He has his own boat and crew and continues to fish in Alaska when he's not working from his home office. If someone that was born and raised in a communist country and being brainwashed in evolution theory, which has no legs to stand on, if someone like that can come to this country and be saved, that and become a believer in God and a follower of Jesus, then there's hope for everyone else because I rejected God all my life until God, God got a hold of me and told me that He can do all the kinds of things for me. All I have to do is ask Him. And that's all it takes for you to ask God and He will come into your heart and it will change your life and you will never be the same. That can happen to you. All you have to do is ask God, and He will come into your life, and you'll never be the same. You'll understand. You'll have a heart of understanding. You'll have eyes that see, ears that hear. And just as you heard, when the presence of God comes on you, it is unmistakable. It's the, it's the compelling evidence that Jesus is alive. And he wants you to ask him, ask him to come in, ask him to show you. Well, we're going to pray. Before we pray, we've gotten some prayer requests in. So let's go over to Jessica to see what's happening online. Jessica. Well, Gordon, Melissa writes in, please pray for my son who has multiple sclerosis. It's affecting his faith and I want him to meet with God. Perez writes in, please can you pray for our baby Daniel? He has a hole in his heart, and we need God to do a miracle. Well, we saw a story earlier about a baby with a hole in, their, in her heart, problems with her kidneys, no eyelid.
no eyelashes, and God did a miracle for her. So God can do a miracle. He is still working miracles. All you have to do is believe that. And when you believe that and act like you believe that, that's when the miracles come. Faith is an action. It's not some abstract, mystical thing. It's an action. You act what you believe in your heart, in your innermost being. So in an act of faith, Will you lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing? And we'll agree. Jessica and I will agree. You agree. The Bible says when two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done for them by our Father in heaven. These aren't my words. These are the words of, the, of Jesus. You can believe them. You can trust them. You can rely on him. So lay your hand on that area of the body. If there are people around you, ask them to come lay their hands on you as well. And let's just believe God for miracles for you today. Lord, we just come to you right now, and first we ask for Daniel, this precious boy. We ask for his heart to be healed, for that hole to close up miraculously to the amazement of all. Do miracles now. And for Melissa's son with MS, we command that spirit of infirmity to leave his body now and never return. Depart and go away, and we speak healing to every nerve, every synapse, every connection. Be healed now in Jesus' mighty name. And now for those who are watching and laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we come into agreement with them and we speak healing over them. And we declare that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, they are healed now. We believe in the sacrifice that Jesus made for all of us and we open ourselves, we open our hearts, our spirits to receive him. So, Lord Jesus, come in. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us. Heal us, deliver us, set us free from these afflictions now. For we ask it in your name. There's a man, you've got a, your hand, uh, uh, your right hand over your uh, chest. There's a burning sensation in your esophagus and in your lungs. And God is just healing you of that right now. No more acid reflux. No more problems with your lungs and congestion. Just, just breathe in deeply. Um, I think there's some emphysema involved. Uh, uh, COPD kind of condition as well, and, and God is just restoring your breath and your life and your energy now. Just breathe him in now and receive total healing. It's like a band going, um, breaking off of your lungs. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jessica, God just gave you something. Yes, I just see there's somebody watching and you have a some kind of a growth on your heart and God is healing that right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the total healing of that heart. Kingdom of God come. We command that growth to leave in Jesus name. We thank you for the creative miracle. And there's somebody else who's watching that you have been sick for so long that it's almost become a part of your identity, that you no longer believe that you can be healed. And we just encourage your heart right now that it is God's will for you to be healed today. So, Father, we thank you for that. And we stand in agreement for that healing. Gordon? Uh, there's someone with crippling arthritis in your hands and your right hand is is over your left hand and there's pain deep in the knuckles. God's healing and restoring. Just take that left hand out and be, begin to move it. Begin to do what you couldn't do before and realize the great miracle that's happened to you. you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we receive you, we receive the answer to every human need. Be with us now. 
For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've been touched by God, give us a call. 888-777-1999. And we remind you, we're here for you. We're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if you need prayer, we want to pray for you. And so all you have to do is go to the phone and pick up the pick it up and dial that number. 888-777-1999. And there'll be somebody on the other end, one of our prayer, wonderful prayer warriors, who will agree with you in prayer. And remember that scripture I quoted earlier, that if two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done. Now, in my experience, I've seen instant miracles. I've seen dramatic miracles. I've seen things that just boggle the imagination. But I've also seen miracles that took time, that took prevailing prayer. And that's why Jesus taught on prevailing prayer. That sometimes we have to be like the importune widow who goes to the unrighteous judge and she keeps knocking on the door until she gets what she needs to live. And so do that. We're here for you. We're willing to agree with you in prayer. So if you want that, just give us a call and we're here for you. So if pain's afflicting you, if there's anything that's coming back on you, you need someone to prevail with you, we're here for you. We leave you that word from Hebrews. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Realize Yeshua, the Savior, is anointed by God for miracles for you. God bless you.